Let's look at the evidence for water on Mars, both in the past and in the present. And in particular, we're curious about liquid water because as we've seen, we consider liquid water to be one of the key markers for potential habitability of a planet. So first, um, the type of water that we definitely see that there's very clear evidence for are, is it locked into the polar ice caps? So both of the polar ice caps have um, some CO2 ice, so dry ice, that grow and shrink seasonally due to Mars's seasonal cycles from its axial tilt. And uh, the permanent water ice cap on the north polar cap is made of water ice. So this is very clear. We've had evidence of this since the 90s at least. Um, and something else to notice here in this you know, image of the seasonal cycle from October to January to March, that shrinking seasonal CO2 cap is this dark feature that gets revealed when that um, dry ice is evaporated. And this ring is uh, like a, a whole ring of sand dunes around that northern region. And there's some speculation that this you know, northern depression, that lowland, and particularly this region, which is about the size of the Arctic Circle, uh, might be an ancient ocean basin. So there could have been liquid water there at that point. And for this reason, a lot of Mars missions are really interested in testing the, uh, or the Martian soil and uh, looking for evidence of liquid water in that region in the past. So we'll see what they have found. Okay, here's one, which is the rover Phoenix, uh, which uh, roamed around near the northern ice cap, uh, dug a little trench. And so in the left image, this is shortly after Phoenix dug the trench. And then after waiting for a while, some of this water is sublimating. So this is evidence of water ice based on how fast it sublimated at the temperature and pressure at that location. Um, and by sublimate, I mean that, you know, um, water can go from the frozen state ice to liquid that's melting, but water can also go directly from the frozen state to the gaseous state at low temperatures or sorry, at low pressures, and that's called sublimation. This doesn't happen often on Earth, but it, you're probably familiar with sublimation if you've ever had a chunk of dry ice, right? Because the dry ice just lets off, you know, cold fumes of carbon dioxide, and that is the process of sublimation. So for the, you know, atmospheric pressures on Earth, dry ice sublimates the same way that water sublimates on Mars. So very clear evidence of frozen water today on Mars. And there's some evidence from different surface features that we see that we suspect were formed by flowing water. So on the left here is an example of a runoff channel. This looks kind of like a, you know, a river delta on Earth where the, you get this like alluvial fan of kind of fingered branches from this river um, kind of you know, fanning out into this lower lying region. Uh, so these features are interesting because if there was liquid water there, how, where did it come from? Was it from a flowing river or was it from some sort of underground spring that seeped up and then out and then flowed in, you know, a, a shorter duration location? Uh, we don't know for sure. Um, there's also what, what we would call outflow channels, and these are much, you know, wider and, um, look like they came from more violent events like flooding. And so again, we don't know whether this flooding was some sort of surface flooding, um, you know, the same way that an ice dam can break on earth and then a lot of water can flood out of it. Uh, the same thing could have happened on Mars or maybe this was also the result of some subsurface melt, maybe from, you know, volcanic activity heating the subsurface ice, melting it and then it flooding out of the surface. So these are features that warrant further investigation. And then we also see these kind of gullies on the walls of canyons. So these dark streaks, uh, they appear to be potentially the result of water flowing down the walls of these craters. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. It could be that CO2 as it sublimates under the surface destabilizes that surface and then the resulting rock and sand uh, kind of make a little landslide, uh, but it could be from flowing water. 
there's some interesting evidence that some of these regions contain minerals and uh, that are like hydrated salts that are evidence that water was there. And so based on those recent measurements, it seems like maybe there is some uh, at least subsurface flowing water that could uh, you know, melt at the surface and then flow out. Uh, and for the most part, this has to be salty water because liquid water on Mars isn't supported at its temperature and pressure. But if you add salt, then the water is able to be liquid at those low temperatures and pressures. So here's some more examples of that. Uh, and this image in particular was the one that showed evidence of those hydrated salts. We've also sent rovers to, you know, craters that have these water looking features in order to have them go investigate a little closer. And so this are, these are images from the Curiosity, well, these are images from the Curiosity rover um, that show what looks like flat mudstone. So this looks like, you know, kind of like the broken up texture of the bottom of lake beds. Um, and then this feature on the right looks like layered sedimentary rock. So it looks like what would happen if, you know, rivers repeatedly and potentially from different directions flowed new material down that then got concreted into rock. So this looks like riverbed, this looks like lake bed. And then this third image was um, some cliff banding that contains water ice, which the blue has been artificially enhanced. So you can very clearly see this layer. This is from orbit, uh, not by curiosity. Okay, so all of these tantalizing evidence of at least past liquid water on Mars's surface. And then this is the type of crater that we, you know, look to possibly go explore. I like this one is called Miyamoto Crater. And basically the entire half of it looks like it was destroyed by flood erosion. So it could be that this crater was at one point filled, uh, so a lake, and then uh, some sort of catastrophic flooding event wiped out half of its crater rim. Uh, this was one of the candidate locations for Curiosity to explore, but they ended up choosing Gale Crater instead. Here's another crater, Jezero Crater, that um, we suspect was a lake in the past. So there's evidence of clays and carbonate materials, and you can see this same kind of alluvial fan shape here. Um, and this is where NASA is going to land the Perseverance rover, which is about halfway to the red planet right now. This is an artist rendering, not an actual image. So with all of those, you know, pieces of evidence for past liquid water on Mars, it makes us wonder, is there a life on Mars now? Or was there a life on Mars when it was a water covered planet? And uh, by life, we don't necessarily mean, you know, animal life like we're familiar with, but at the very least microbial life. 